We are here with Toilet Like a Hawaiian Flower, uh, back doing it again uh, with Play It Forward. And uh, Toy, you were nominated by Samantha Shida. Is it Shada or Shada? I keep butchering her name. I, I, I say Shada. Shada. She hasn't, so, she hasn't corrected me yet. Yeah, Samantha's great. She is great. She's a super smart woman. And she kindly enough nominated and referred us to you. And we are here talking about your movie today that you did called The Boxer. Actually, it's just Boxer. It's just Boxer. Just Boxer. And um, we're going to be asking you the usual three questions. And I just want to set it up thematically a little bit for our audience in terms of, you know, it's this movie about a uh, unexpected killer. And it really uh, kind of masks or hides the or plays with, um, you know, the lethal in the guise of the innocent. And that is really, and all this time, the narrator who is talking about her life as a lethal um, agent is, uh, you know, talking about that one day she's going to have to reveal her lethalness to uh, her son, who she is obviously nurturing and, and completely the opposite to. So this dichotomy that you play with, um, you know, getting us into the first question, why, why this, why devote yourself to this movie? And how does this subject play in your life? Uh, well, the movie came on its own and it wasn't any statement of any sort other than the fact that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in it. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, writer, we should, we should, actor, yeah, we should help. and so I'm, I'm on as director, right? I'm I'm on as director, but um, but I am the lead actor in it, and uh, it mostly came up. This my directing came about uh, because I was frustrated with just constantly being being called in for, you know, the the insignificant manicurist or the tiger mom, you know, and and that's not what I came to. Hollywood to do. I came home to Hollywood to, to do action films, but you know, they look at me and they're like, you're not an action star. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't know what that means, but I guess in your eyes, you think I'm not an action star, but in my eyes. And so I, I just set about making a bunch of films that I could just, um, you know, Showcase play all the roles. Yeah, well, play all the roles that no one's giving me, you know, yeah. because they want, they want Michelle Rodriguez or, uh, Charlize Theron or, you know, Angelina Jolie, which I'm not any of those types, you know. Uh, and um, it, it comes, you know, I mean, the film came so easy to me just because it's, it's actually kind of a parable, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. like, I get called in for the accountant, I get called in for the soccer mom, I get called in for the, uh -huh. for the uh, waitress you know but i'm never the lead and those are the three victims that i <laughs> that i'm killing off right right uh, uh that's very because, insightful yeah because that's you know because i get close to them because i play the soccer mom to them and they they trust me as a soccer mom and the waitress trusts me as the other waitress and the accountant trusts me as the you know the office colleague and i get close to them i can off them like at any point in time when i choose you know uh, so I'm not like that stalking glamour girl that, you know, you can spot a mile down the street that's coming after you, you know, with a gun in the hand, you know, well, uh, which I think is a little bit more realistic in real life. I mean, I'm not a contract killer in real life, so, uh, I, I, I don't know how they do it, but I think that might be a little bit more realistic. Like you don't want to, you don't necessarily want to put a sign on your head, a, a neon sign that says I'm the killer. Sure, you, know, you don't see him you. coming. Yeah, I mean, yeah. leave no trail behind. Right. So, uh, so, uh, so there I am playing all three roles that I normally play in Hollywood, uh, but then I'm doing more. But that's so. really interesting in terms of the storyline. So, I mean, you said initially, well, you know, I just wanted to make a movie so I could play these roles that I came to Hollywood to play, and here you are with a storyline that's particularly mirroring your yeah, own I, life in a unique way yeah it's uh it was definitely a um it was definitely something i saw afterwards it wasn't yeah. like i thought 
started at the time when I was writing. At the time I was writing, I was like, oh, let's play the, the contract killer mom, you know, and, you know, let's, you know, do all these because, you know, uh, because I would be good at it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's... Story, that's literally how the story came about. And then I thought about it afterwards. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, the reason why I picked soccer mom and the waitress and accountant is, you know, you can see all these things on my reel, my current acting reel, you know, these roles that mm -hmm. I played. Right. And in a way, those are all the personas that you want to kill off for this other persona, <laughs> which you are more interested in pursuing. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's very so, yeah, cool. It yeah, started off, it started off very innocently. I mean, just just like, oh, let's just do something for fun, and then it became something. Oh, I I see unconsciously, I was already doing this, you know, in my head. Yeah, and that's what's so interesting about you know how art mirrors you know nature and vice versa. It's you know really part of that reflection that it allows us to do as artists as well as the audience to do while they're watching the art that's in front of them. Um, yeah. No matter, you know, even, you know, the greatest action films, I think, have that, you know, real, like you said, parable, you know, they have that illustration of, of life and some principles that you can take away with when the movie's over. So that leads us to the what. Now, what do you, in retrospect, you know, see that this movie is thematically playing with or trying to say with these two real dichotomies of innocence and lethalness. Yeah, well, you know, that's the life I live. It's so funny, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, I walk down the street and I kid you not, for the first, I think, five years I was in Hollywood, no matter how much of my resume, my acting resume said how much of a martial artist I was, no one knew, I, none of the offices, the casting offices knew I was a martial artist for five, six years. Mm. <laughs> right? Mm. It's just, yeah. you know, because I walk in and I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a mean person. I don't think I am, you know, I think I'm very personable, you know, and, you know, we laugh and I joke and I just don't, I don't just don't seem like that, you know, that type, you know, that brooding uh tom hardy type or you know you know what i'm saying um yeah and, i mean you don't come off as an and, aggressive killer no no yeah. no but but you know anyone it's funny all my female friends when uh when we're hanging out at night and they're like and we're you know walking home or something like they turn to me i'm like you know i feel incredibly safe with you <laughs> you know because I, I don't have a problem walking down the street at night you know uh Oh, yeah. for the yeah. audience out there, for the audience out there, uh, I did all my, all, I did all the action work. I didn't have a stunt double. I, I trained regularly. I'm a martial artist. So that, that's some backstory. So yeah, know. and that was very impressive. I mean, your uh, ability to do all that stuff was really technically, you know, on point. Oh, thank you. It was impressive, I yeah. I mean, uh, the fact of the matter is, is I train these days for the past, uh, seven or eight years i've been training solidly just for camera so if you put me in the ring again i'd probably fail out in about 30 seconds because i don't train for for you know camera kung fu is just bad kung fu i don't know if you know that it's just not it's things you should never do in a proper fight um, is that right but yeah it looks beautiful but it is looks it more exaggerated right? movement oh absolutely it's yeah. like hey Hey, I'm coming. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's so telegraphed. You know, yeah. 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 So you could totally see it. Um, but uh, uh, so. Um, right. But you have real I, experience. Well, I probably do very well in the ring, but you know, for for some quick self defense, I could I certainly can handle myself. Yeah, you know? I definitely got that. You know what you're doing, and but I, I still want to get dive a little deeper into that. You know, because you really are in your life as well as your work playing with these, you know, these two sides. And I think, you know, the, this yin and yang is in all of our lives, right? There's this, yeah. you know, life and death. These are these two extremes that we're all containing in, in any given moment. Um, yet you've chosen to create a film about this aspect of this kind of violence and nonviolence and what that looks like to a child and then the, the things that you have to go out and do as an adult in this world to make a living, right? So you right. must have seen that as a young child. You must have witnessed 
this, you know, uh, your parents or someone going out to do these things that are hard or dangerous or hurtful, and then you're, you know, somehow protect protected. Were, or, my, were my parents contract killers? Uh, I don't, I don't think well, so. you know, but that's an extreme, uh, right? That's extreme, yeah. you know, but I certainly have seen it. No, I've I mean, seen my, my parents go to work and like fucking be miserable, right? And then they yeah, come home yeah. and, you know, that carries over. So, yeah. so there's that contention, right? Where, you know, you've got to protect, but then you've got to, like, what are you, you know, these switching of gears. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's, no, there's I something. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, both my parents were, um, were in, were were uh, in the workforce, and um, you know, both of them had sometimes they had bad days, and sometimes they had good days. You know, and um, most of the time, most of the times, my mom came back pretty quick, pretty pretty easy. Sometimes my father was a little stressed out. Um, if anything, my my father, um, I saw most deeply in my father, who was um, who had who was extremely charming at parties. He was always the life of the party. Extre ex uh, people always wanted to know him. He was a leader in the community. Uh, and yet at home, um, he would certainly have a bad temper. And I'm pretty much like that too. I actually <laughs> do have, uh, <laughs> I have to admit, sometimes I do have a bad temper, which I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm in constant, you know, uh, it's a constant challenge that I'm constantly trying to get over and, and I've very gotten human. Through, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but, um, but, you know, um, I can be at times very outgoing and very, very much the actor, uh, on the red carpet if, if need be, you know what I mean? Yeah. So of course. you're very uh, polished and poised and know how to carry yourself in a, in a room. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know this, and this this film is really about being that extreme, and and it's actually not that extreme. I mean, I would, you know what? I would get away with murder, actually not, since we're talking so specifically, I won't say murder, but I would get away with a lot of lot a lot of lot of shit that, when I was growing up as a teenager and being rebellious, um, that no one would be would ever. They would be like, "How did you get away with that?" And was like, "Well, they just don't expect me, this face, to be doing that horrible thing, you know." Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I actually, I mean, if you ask me if I lived that part of it, yeah, I did live that part of it. And it wasn't like it wasn't like I was trying to trying to frame anybody or throw anybody under the bus. It was just that they never asked. No one ever caught me no one ever said oh you should ask toy she's or you, she, toy seems like the one who's even though the, all the facts might point to me they were just like oh she would never do it <laughs> they would just never ask say, you know they would never they would never come and i see cool <laughs> well you know i like to do these um because uh of you know obviously what the conversation or the conversation leads to and you know to understand all the things that we as humans do and better as they're more openly discussed and also to appreciate where the films are coming from more and all their like multi dimensions. And one of the things, you know, that I think I can appreciate more is this like, you know, like there's two main things like going on. One is like, you know, the usual suspect and, and that being like, you know, not the case, but also this kind of like controlled environment for violence. Um, and where, you know, it might be appropriate or where it's not, where you can blow some steam and we're not And martial arts, you know, I mean, in themselves is a, this controlled environment for violence and aggression used in appropriate channels. Well, I've been training for a while now. Yeah. How uh, many years? When did you start? I mean, <laughs> teenage, post teenage? Uh, it's been about 18 years now. Uh -huh. 18, 19 years. I did the math the other day and I was like, wow, has it been that long? Yeah, it's uh, crazy out of time. I just yeah. gets away from yeah, me. I, uh, and not all of them were, not all those years were everyday intensive. You know, there were some years where I just didn't have access to um, uh, a temperate climate that I could, you know, train outside or, you know, or I was injured, you know, like uh, I've, you know, I've had a I had a four year stint where my my back was hurt, you mm. know, so I could do minimal amounts of things. And, yeah, that sucks. 
right right now I'm getting out of a knee injury, so and that's been about three. Years. So it's like you know, it's yeah. it's, it's just it, it's not everyday uh, intensity, but um, there have been moments of everyday intensity, and those are those are amazing. Um, but uh, but what I've discovered is is that as I've gotten towards this this end of the um, that means the further end of my training. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, that um, martial arts is not about anyone else but yourself. Mm. You know, it's not about it's not about um, fighting. It's not about violence. It's to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to say this about anyone, anyone else who does it or anyone else who teaches it. But to me, it's not about the violence and it's not about the fighting and it's, um, it's the actual practice of martial arts. And I'm not talking about yeah. martial arts for camp, but not martial arts for movies, but I mean, the actual practice of martial arts is about the self and yeah. learning about the self and constantly learning about the self and pushing yeah. the self and not pushing the self and learning not when to push the self and learning um, who and you even are. what is the self. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, that's exactly it. What is yourself? What is you? And what is the other person's self? But it has nothing to do with anyone else outside of your own thing. It just so happens it's wrapped up in this kind of uh, phys these physical skills, which, um, you know, um, people tend to break down emotionally when they're exhausted physically. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're more open to their emotions at that time because they're, they're not for the, the emotions are not locked in. Yeah. Because they're broken, they're starting to break down because their physical, their physical um, physicality is broken down. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know part of the reason why that you know, uh, for example, like Shaolin, you know, the whole kung fu stuff is associated with monks and stuff is that they do all these exercises to break down their physicality so they can get to the real core of their emotionality in the heart. Does that make sense? Totally, 100%. Okay. That's very so cool. when you, if uh, a great example of this is if you watch Hero, Hero, which is the Dunyi Mao movie with uh, Jet Li. How do you spell Remember that? that? No. Hero, mm -hmm. it's like the hero, like H-E-R-O. Oh, Hero, okay, cool. Yeah, Hero. Uh, which came out, you know, about 10, 15 years ago. They, he talks about the three tenets of swordsmanship. And, you know, if you, I guess if, if, you're, not a, if you're not a martial artist, um, you just kind of accept it as part of like this Zen Asian philosophy. But if you are a martial artist who happens to be a swordsman, which I actually am a swords person, mm -hmm. uh, you completely understand what those what those goals are, you know? What are they? Uh, so like the, the first one is, I can't, I can't remember. So I, I you know, people who are terms. fans of this movie. Yeah. People fans of this movie will probably slaughter me if Don't I get worry. this wrong. But the first one is, um, you know, mastering the sword. Right. And then the second one is, um, mastering, um, knowing, mastering yourself. And then the third one is knowing that there is no fight. Mm. Mm. There is cool. no fight. Right. Well, you so, know, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, so it's, and uh, at the time when I was watching the movie, I completely understood it, but I was not anywhere near understanding like, number two or three right. you know right. and right, right. like and then you know at this point i'm not saying that i'm a master of myself yet but you know clearly i I'm still working on my temper yes. issues but like matured but and have, have yeah, uh, but, but, um, yeah but i do actually understand three completely because i walk away from a lot of fights yeah you know? yeah it does, it's not like um not because I'm afraid or because I'm just like I don't have the energy for it, but just because it's like it doesn't it seems to be so meaningless. Right. It's fight not a fight. Itself. You don't have to choose it. 
Right, exactly. You don't yeah. have to choose it. Yeah, yeah. No, I can totally relate to that. I've been a, a silly hothead. I, at, I gave up competitive fighting because uh, I gave up comp when, when I was competing and before I was doing movies. When uh -huh. I was competing, I actually gave up competitive fighting because I saw my opponents and I was like, I'm going to completely destroy them. So I'm just going to walk away and therefore I had a forfeit I had a you know default forfeiture on that but it didn't matter because it didn't it didn't matter you know like I would rather not destroy somebody you know and it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt, help anybody absolutely absolutely that's what's the a, point that's a physical ego thing you know totally totally which is so opposed to those three tenets one is mastering the sword one is mastering yourself and one is knowing third is knowing that's not a fight yeah yeah it's yeah. very cool well for the last question in retrospect um what have you learned by making this film about yourself on off the set anything oh yeah okay so uh this was the film where um now i had made about four or five things before this um and they were all like you know you know me as an actor oh let's just you know get some friends together let's I'll just buy you some food. Let's just make a movie or blah, blah, blah. Let's just have some fun. You know, like we weren't really, you know, we weren't really, you know, it, it was just like, let's see this for a laugh. Ha -ha. Now, don't remember, sure. We had a great time when we made Boxer. We had a great time when we made Boxer. Absolutely a great time. But when I was on set and I was directing it, I was, there was that moment where I was just like, oh, I'm a real director now. <laughs> you know, no, no, like I knew because I knew exactly what to do. It was like, oh, do this shot and then do this shot and then do this and then we go do that shot and then we can move on to the next shot and make sure that the, you know, get the lighting here or whatever, you know, right. just, you know, those kind of things. It was, and it was like, it was, it was all, the whole film was built in my mind as we were shooting it. Like, oh, this, this is what it feels like to be a director. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, so, at that point, uh, the, that was the kind of self-awareness that was just, that was not the actor just having a laugh for the weekend and just making a film and kind of pretending to be a director. At that point, it was like, oh, I am not a director in training anymore. I, this is, I'm a director now, right? Mm, that's cool. And um, yeah, and it was pretty cool. And, um, you know, and then I uh, was fortunate enough to, be able to shadow some other directors, one of them particularly, particularly huge and large. And, um, and um, I understood everything that he was saying. He was just amped up about it. Like he, he could do, he could do way more than I could do. Like he could give out 30 adjustments in, in one go, whereas I, whereas I can only give five to 10 adjustments, you know, because I can't hold it all in my mind, but he, you know, he's so sharp like that, you know? Um, and, um, and I realized also, it was really fascinating because I realized, um, you know, there were things that I know, I knew that he didn't know. And that was like, wow, I know something that you didn't know. And that was just amazing to me because this is a guy who wins a ton of awards. I mean, he's huge. And, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and so it was good to know that I could understand everything, that nothing that what he was doing was a mystery to me. And then there were, uh, although he could do it much better than I, but, but he, but uh, that there were things that I actually could also do much better than him. So, and I just realized, oh, well, that's what we bring to our directorship. You know, you have this background and you can do all this. And I have my background and I can do all this, you know, and then someone else has, Sam Shada has all this, you know, and someone right. else has all this. Um, and um, I think that just uh, understanding that w as a director, what you have is completely unique because we all were born and raised in not, not every life is at all the same. You might be similar, you might have grown up in Brooklyn together and gone to the same uh, same schools together, um, 
the same, you know, uh, you know, married the same twin brothers, you know, you know, you might have a similar sure. life, but most people are not that similar. I mean, they don't have those, they're not, they don't have those similar upbringings. Well, it sounds like what you're saying, the two main things are first is in terms of director's job is to have that overarching vision and for that vision to be refined and then kept in front of the person's mind, forefront of their mind as they're working. Um, and then, you know, various adjustments that can be retained in any given moment to give out to all the different actors, you know, players um, on and off set that you may need to. So that's something that um, really speaks about vision and I think helps, you know, any filmmaker on any level really having that confidence of that vision. And then I think the second thing that you're talking about is really the uniqueness of that vision, you know, comes from your own unique right. identity and, right. and what you bring to the table as it's very perceptive. It's a very character perceptive. artist. You Thank a, you. Every, every director has a uniqueness. You know, you might have the same subject matter, but you will have a uniqueness in how you approach it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong and there's nothing uh, bad or good, or it, it just is your vision, uh, yeah. your, uh, your approach. And, and if you like it, if you like that approach to the subject matter, then I say, go all for it, balls to the wall, you know, right. just go all for it. You can't, and, you can't, you can't question yourself, you know? And that, and, and that statement can't question yourself, you know, that mastery of the vision goes back into the mastery of yourself. Yes. Which is part yes, two have, after the sword. That's that's all. That's funny, Constantine. Wow, you're a philosopher at heart. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Probably a Appreciate martial it. artist somewhere in there too. Well, you know, I do but, yoga. Um, I do yoga. Oh, yeah. so you know, it's, it's like they're internal, very similar. Actually, I right. Yeah. I actually believe that a lot of martial arts came from yoga, because uh, that's the same thing. And yoga, yoga initially was, uh, according to legend, and I, you know. Don't quote me. I'm not National Geographic, but uh, <laughs> according to legend, yoga was uh, developed as um, uh, as exercises to tire out the uh, the Buddhist disciples who were who couldn't meditate long enough, and they were also blocked. So so they broke them down doing yoga as well as built up their physicality so they could meditate for hours on end. That's right. Yeah, I've heard that's right? that very similar thing. Um, so, um, and that, you know, that's the same thing with, you know, these Shaolin monks or the whatever monks, the Wudan monks, you know, like who are, that's, you know, that who are famous, probably commercially. So now they probably carried that on for whatever, but, um, you know, to, to kind of build up the stamina emo physically, but also to break down emotionally. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, build up the stamina to meditate and pray and, and find the inner self while breaking down all the things yeah. you know the swords do is cutting the light from the dark and the waste from whatnot yeah um, from the value so, so yeah so um the whole point is to find yourself knowing your self-worth knowing you know knowing if you have a strong by the way you know you shouldn't in my opinion as a director just because someone gives you a job doesn't mean you should take it yeah unless it's extremely lucrative and then that's okay um, cause we certainly all want to be comfortable in our lives, but, um, uh, but you know, if you take a job, um, uh, hopefully the point being is that you love the subject material and you feel like you can really give your, you can inject your approach to it. You know, and yeah. I don't want to say always use the word vision. I think that's sometimes overrated. It feels so lofty, but your, your approach to it and you can, you can really make it something special. It's like, it's like, re, it's like covering a song, you know, a famous, uh, sure. you know, uh, cover, Why, covering why not say heart? Song. Yeah. You know, you know, like, can you really bring something new to it? Can you bring something like a, a, a new perspective that people would be like, wow, I, I never heard that chord progression before, but it was, it's so obvious the way Constantine did it, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, sure. uh, because, totally. because of the way you, 
bring bring it to the way you hear that song well i, I gotta tell you this um and um uh, you know the i saw bruce lee as a kid uh he was talking on something some documentary or whatever and um he was like you know uh, and he had this you know imperfect english um he said like uh you know i could impress you with all these things that I can do. And, you know, he's doing them as he's talking and, and certainly very impressive. But he said, that's easy. Uh, to be able to express myself authentically, that's hard. And uh, that stuck with me. And I was like, I don't know, seven, eight, five, ten. So, uh, you know, that's that's really yeah, I think Bruce, what you're saying. Bruce, Bruce was amazing because he was already the master. <laughs> it's so way way like he went from like zero to master in like what two hours or something i i mean i yeah I'm so totally, he's very young he's amazing i mean you you go back and you listen to him speak um and he uh he definitely expresses that same thing that you hear in hero or you know it takes someone like me 18 19 years to figure out you know <laughs> you're not alone there hey at least <laughs> you you're figuring it out two hours at least you're figuring it out. I mean, a lot of people, you know, don't get there in this life. Yeah. So, um, cool. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I go back and uh, every every few years I go back and listen l listen to watch his um, watch those documentaries or watch those. You know, you, now they're up on these like you know rare videos are up on YouTube and whatnot. And I'm just like, dude's still a badass. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's not like not he wasn't talking out of his ass. He was really it was really oh, yeah. his truth. He, yeah. and, and 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 his truth was pretty pretty to the core truth like pretty pretty human truth you know yeah. so that's pretty that's good exactly yeah well on that note toy lay it has been a pleasure thank you so much for joining us on play it forward and sharing your truth thank you for having me i appreciate it it was great awesome thank you it was really a pleasure to meet you all right until next time everybody bye, bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and leave us a like and or a comment. It makes a big difference. Plate Forward is brought to you by Digipops, where we're building a community to put film and filmmaker discovery in your hands. Here, filmmakers and fans, the creative class, recognizes each other fairly and transparently through a community-curated film festival each quarter. It's coming soon. Thank you.